Jacobs and Young Hofmeyer, Friedadorp and Titus have been suffering from water supply problems in Joburg for the last three years. Some households have been with up, are left without water for up to 12 hours a day. Refuse removal also scrap patchy and big social problems like drug abuse plague those suburbs. Nikolaus Bauer joins us live now from Jan Hofmeyer for a taste of life in the suburbs just outside the Johannesburg city centre. Nikolaus, good afternoon to you. What's the picture there ahead of local elections 2021? Thank you very much for that, Stephen. We've been triangulating between those three adjoining suburbs throughout this afternoon, and we join you from an informal rubbish dump that's actually just apparently popped up in the past uh, couple of weeks or so, just over a month. Uh, and a uh, guest that we're going to chat to in, about, uh, in a moment or so are actually informal recyclers who were sifting through here in search of some scrap metal. Uh, they, of course, are bereft of any opportunity whatsoever and uh, have taken to collecting scrap metal to try and put food on the tables at their houses. They're long-standing residents of neighboring Friededorp. And in essence, Stephen, I have to say that these three adjoining suburbs really tell a tale of governance failure here. Uh, besides infrastructure complete collapse in many spots around these three suburbs, you're seeing a lack of provision of basic services like electricity and water, at least regularly. And you see uh, informal rubbish dumps like this scattered throughout the suburb itself. But let's find out how it's all been in the past five years and indeed in the past couple of decades as well. A long-standing resident of Friedadorp, Jonathan Kutsia, joining us now. Jonathan, thank you for your time on Newsroom Africa. Uh, in a nutshell, tell us what life is like in Friedadorp. Well, it's quite worse. In the beginning, we used to have water, we used to have public services that came to pick up our rubbish and everything. But these days, since, how can I say, the, the new government's taken over, we've been battling. We haven't got any service delivery, but yet we keep voting. Tell me, what has the situation been like in the past five years, though? Because uh, in Johannesburg especially, I mean, we had uh, Mayor Herman Mashaba for a while, then we had Jeffrey Makubo. Uh, have you noticed any difference in service delivery in the past five years in particular? It's like every mayor brings new problems. With each mayor that we get, they, they have their own circumstances that they have to face. We understand that, but it's hard because we're suffering under it. At the end of the day, they go to their houses with the water and everything. We've got to drive it on with buckets and stuff, so it's a battle. Talk to us about the water situation. How often do you guys have regular, uninterrupted water supply? Yeah, it happens about twice or three times a month. And power goes worse. And what are these water restrictions like? I believe you only have water guaranteed for certain hours of the day, yeah. late at night or early in the morning. Yeah. If you don't run your water before 4 o'clock in the morning to fill up your bath, you don't get water. And that's for the whole day. So you've got to run the water. After your bath, leave your water in so you can use it for the toilet. So it's a battle for the people. And the local ward councillor or uh, any your government official maybe telling you exactly why there's, there's, there's this lack of service nobody's delivery? Come, nobody's come to us to tell us anything about that. Yeah? Nobody. And talk to us about the average day for you uh, and what life is like in, in you said you're from Fredadorp. Uh, I understand that you, you're lacking opportunity and you've taken out to, to gathering scrap metal. Yeah. What's life for you, uh, for you like? What's an average day? Um, wake up at like half past four, five o'clock you're out on the road looking for scrap. I'm actually a petrol, diesel and hydraulic mechanic, but still, work is hard to find. Even if you've got qualifications, you still don't find work. So it's up in the morning, go from place to place collecting your scrap, and then at night back again, get your water, make sure there's uh, electricity, there's no electricity, make fire for food, and then start all over again the next morning. So tell me something, Jonathan. What are you hoping for these local government elections? What, what, what would you like to see happen in your suburb? The only thing that I would like to see is just a bit, of, uh, bit more of service delivery. That we can actually see the government cares about us because now the only time we're seeing the government is close to the elections. So, What would your message be to the new mayor of Johannesburg when he takes office uh, or he or she takes office uh, after the November 1st elections? They must come out and check what the areas are like and meet the people and then they can see what we're actually going through. Thank you very much for being so honest and so brave with us on Newsroom Africa. That's Jonathan Kutsia, indigent resident of the Friededorp suburb. We're going to be triangulating between these three suburbs throughout the day, Stephen. That's Friededorp, Jan Hofmeyer and Fitas.
And in a word, it's desperation, really. Uh, everybody that we've spoken to thus far this afternoon have said that uh, government seems to have just given up. We know that there's a long laundry list of problems in the uh, Johannesburg municipality, uh, not only involving service delivery, but also uh, account management and the like. And one wonders uh, how many people are actually going to vote come November the 1st, because it seems to be like a 50-50 split with the people that we have spoken to residence-wise, saying that some will vote, some others saying that they're just absolutely not interested whatsoever uh, and believe that uh, uh, politicians have done nothing but lie uh, over the past couple of elections and uh, not been forthcoming with any of their promises. Stephen. Well, I mean, it really is a complicated story, Nicolaus, about how people feel completely, as you say, left out by government. Government does nothing for them. Why should they do anything for politicians? What I get from the person you spoke to, from some of the reporting you've been done, is more a sense of despair than a sense of anger. I imagine it also depends where you actually go in our country. Indeed. Uh, I mean, we know that service delivery protests have become a fixture on the South African um, uh, social scene for several years now. And that is mainly driven by anger and a lack of services. But I think you are indeed correct there, Stephen. It's now slowly but surely being morphed into resignation and despair as people believe that the situation is just not going to change regardless of what they do, whether or not it is burning a tire and protesting, voting, or just simply boycotting the entire thing. Nicolaus Barth, appreciate the time. Thank you very much indeed.